Hello everyone, my name is Glenn Guyton, keynote speaker, diversity and inclusion in the workplace trainer, and today I want to talk a little bit about bias. Yes, a lot of people are talking about unconscious bias right now. So what's the difference between unconscious bias and implicit bias? Well, that's what I want to share with you today. Implicit bias is an association about people, places, or situations often based on mistaken, inaccurate, or incomplete information. And it includes the personal histories we bring into any situation. Now, when I say implicit bias, I mean that we all have an understanding of the biases that we have. And so just, just to say that we have unconscious bias, that we are sleeping, I say, hey, you need to wake up to your bias. Wake up to your bias uh, because you understand the history that you bring into a situation. You understand the bias that you, you bring. So I actually believe the term unconscious bias is pretty much a cop out when we think about the workplace, when we think about how we deal with people on a daily basis. At some point, we become aware of the bias that we have. Imagine that you are on a walkabout in Australia. You just had to get away. COVID-19 is over and you're walking around Australia on a walkabout. Uh, you're socially distanced and you come across Taz, a Tasmanian devil. Taz attacks you and it's the worst day of your life. So from now on, anytime you see a Tasmanian devil, you, oh, oh, you freak out, right? Because of your association that you have with uh, pain and Tasmanian devils, anytime you see something from Australia, you oh, oh, you freak out, not because you hate Australia, but because of what happened to you in Australia with the Tasmanian devil. And so now you can't drink Foster's beer, uh, you can't watch Crocodile Dundee, because you have all of this implicit bias because of your interaction with Taz on your walkabout in Australia. So what do you what do you do with that? How do you deal with it? You are aware that you have this negative relationship and sometimes this irrational fear of things from Australia because of your implicit bias, because of your interaction with Taz. Uh, what do you do? Well, there are, there are a couple of things I will tell you to do. There are four things that I'm gonna share with you that I think will be helpful in you to combating implicit bias. When you're in a situation, describe what's, what's happening. Take a deep breath, take a step back, describe what's happening. That's the first thing that you should do. Uh, interpret what's going on. You know, is this my bias kicking up? Uh, is, is there something crazy going on with me? Why am I freaking out about that? You know, take the time, interpret. Interpret what's going on. Next thing you should do is to verify. You know, uh, talk to someone else. Uh, try to put yourself in someone else's shoes to see the situation from a different perspective. Ask your friend, someone maybe that's different from you, say, hey, am I freaking out uh, in a justifiable manner or just a, a throwback to my walkabout in Australia? And then evaluate uh, the situation. Did I, did I handle this properly? Uh, is there something better that I could have done? Uh, what steps can I do to prevent me from uh, going into full-blown uh, bias mode? So those are some things that you can do dealing with implicit bias. Hopefully you have a better understanding of what implicit bias is. And one thing I would ask you, uh, don't talk about implicit bias in the workplace as uh, using it as a tool to keep from talking about racism or other forms of discrimination that are just overt and that are just blatant. Uh, sometimes we wanna say implicit bias in order to ignore the overt acts of uh, racism and discrimination. Don't do that. All right. Have a great day. Glenn Guy, thank you.